welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat today. I'm going to be leading you through a short supine yin practice. So supine means that we're going to be lying on our back the entire time. So this is really great to do if you're maybe recovering from an injury or if you just have a lot of exhaustion and fatigue today and you just want to practice yin but don't really want to support your body, want to be as passive as we possibly can, this is definitely the practice for you. I've also shortened class so that it can more, e this practice can more easily just fit into the pockets of your day, into your schedule. I know sometimes finding the time to do a full hour or 90 minute long yin practice can definitely be a challenge. So this is shorter, but it's all lying down in our backs and we're still gonna stretch through the entire body. We're gonna get through the hips, the glutes, the spine, lots of really great stuff. You will need two blocks for this practice. Uh, really thick cushions will also work for this class. Just something to give you a little bit of extra support, definitely for our last posture of the class. But before we start talking about our last posture, let's get started and we'll lie down all the way onto your back, finding that supine position. And maybe just stretch your legs out and give them a good shake side to side. Maybe flop your legs in and out. So just really settling in, getting really, really comfortable here. And we're gonna start class with banana pose. So you're gonna take your hips, shifting them over to the right, and then you want your shoulders to make their way to the left side of your mat. And then as well, your ankles will also reach to the left side of your mat. So we're making this big curve along the mat and if you would like an extra challenge, you can maybe cross your right heel over the left, and then your arms will grab opposite elbows and reach up overhead. I always find it takes a couple seconds to really find the right position so I can get into that stretch. So I'll invite you as we start here to really play around and find that maximum stretch through the side of your body. It's really important here that your right hip as we're doing the right side stretch, stays on the mat. So it's not gonna lift, we're not gonna roll to one side. And then once you've found your position, just resolving to be still here, breathing into that length that we're creating through the side of the body. You may feel this all the way up into your armpit, maybe into your tricep even. And then you may even feel this all the way down towards the outside of your right calf. For me, I definitely feel this the most right at the outside of my right hip. That little TFL muscle that's right on the side there that connects into your IT band is definitely what I feel stretching here. As I mentioned, we're only holding for about two minutes, but still really try to fully breathe through those two minutes. Remain still through those two minutes. Just fully experience this posture. And bringing your arms all the way down to your sides. You're gonna uncross your legs if that's what you had done on this first side. And then just center your body so your hips come to the center of your mat. Your shoulders come back to the center of your mat. And just take a second to feel how the right side feels in comparison to the left before we go to the other side. But 
like they're really opened up here on the right side. I feel like this right leg can really find external rotation really easily. And the right side of my, my torso here feels great. So let's go ahead and even ourselves out doing this on the left. So now shifting your hips to the left side of your mat, shoulders and heels to the right side of your mat. Maybe crossing at the ankles if that's what you had done on the first side. Remembering to keep that left hip on the mat so it stays anchored and it's not lifting whatsoever. So our hips and shoulders are square towards the sky and then your arms grabbing opposite elbows will come up overhead. Continuing to breathe deeply here. And notice how maybe one side feels a little bit differently from the other. So maybe you're experiencing a slightly different stretch sensation on this side, which is totally normal, of course. What's important though is that we make note of it and are very mindful of how these changes feel in our body and maybe start to think about why they might be present. So for me, this left side always feels a little bit easier than the right, but I know that my left hip is very, is a lot more flexible than my right. I have more rotation, I have a lot more, I have much more ease of movement. So I don't know, maybe you have similar experiences in your body. So I'll just take the final minute to think about how this left side maybe differs from your right. Breathing into wherever you feel that stretch. And bring your arms back down to your sides, uncrossing your ankles. And once again, recentering the body before we continue. Just to notice how that feels. And from here, you're gonna need one of those blocks. And we're gonna place it under the hips here. So right under the tailbone. So we're gonna stretch into the front of our hip flexors a little bit. You can stretch out your left leg flat onto the mat and just let that leg relax so your foot can flop open and just find that length through the front of your left hip and then gently pull your right knee in towards you. And as you do this, you might just need to adjust your block slightly so that it's still fully supporting your pelvis and your tailbone. Make sure we still have a long neck across the mat. And once again, once you've found your position, resolving to be still and resist that temptation to fidget, you will need a little bit of arm activation here to pull that knee in closer towards you, but it's not much. And just check in and make sure that it's not translating into tension through the shoulders or into the chest, so your shoulders are staying relaxed. It's really just the arms that are slightly engaging to pull that knee in closer towards you. And that left leg stays relaxed, just finding length through your left hip flexor, breathing in and out. Taking another minute here.
And very gently, you can release that right leg back down onto the mat, bending your left leg in to meet it. And then we'll right away go to the other side. So stretching out your right leg underneath you, bending the left in and very gently using those arms to guide it in closer towards you. Nice and easy. And again, let that right leg flop open so there's no engagement through this leg whatsoever. The knee might bend a little bit. And you're most likely gonna find a little bit of external rotation through that extended leg. And then again, keep your shoulders relaxed, your neck relaxed, and just gently guide that leg in closer to you. I like to imagine that with each exhale as we sit here and breathe that I'm guiding that knee in just a centimeter closer towards my chest. So deepening the pose with each passing exhale. And again, gently guiding that left foot back down onto the mat. Right foot will come in to meet it and we'll lift up just enough to move that block out of the way. Let that, let your pelvis really sink into the mat. Notice how heavy it feels after spending all of that time elevated. And you're gonna bend your right knee in, crossing your ankle over your left thigh. So coming to a figure four position and progressing into a reclined pigeon pose. So your arms will reach through either grabbing the back of your thigh here or the front of your shin. And just, again, just like we did in the previous pose, we're very gently guiding that knee in closer to us with each and every exhale here. Aiming to feel a bit of lengthening through the outside of your right glute. And we are fully relaxing through the legs here. Try to release any tension through the hips. Just like before, we don't want any tension to creep up into the shoulders. The neck stays long. And we continue to breathe. Gently let your left foot come back down onto the mat and maintain this figure four shape as we let our legs fall towards the left. So your right hip will lift off the mat and we're anchoring now the sole of your right foot onto the mat. You do want your knee to stay on top of your ankle so it's not gonna collapse in towards you here. So you might wanna just add your arm onto that leg just to invite it to open up without causing too much tension or muscle activation on the outside of your hip. So really letting your pelvis remain heavy, relaxing through the hips here, 
Your shoulders will both stay on the mat. So even though that hip is lifting, our shoulders stay anchored. And we're continuing to breathe into the stretch. You may feel this now more through the side of your hip, similar to where we felt that banana posture and then out into your IT band. Really targeting the outsides of the legs in today's practice. This posture is really great for maintaining healthy knees and can definitely help with alleviating any hip tension. Gently guide the legs back to center. You might need to engage the core just a little bit to protect the lower back as we do that. And we'll place the right foot back down onto the mat, right away going to the other side. So now your left foot hooks to the top of your right thigh, threading the arms through, grabbing a hold of what you can. And again, gently guiding that left leg or that right leg in closer to you. Continuing to breathe deep and remain still. Keeping those shoulders relaxed. We'll take another two minutes or so. Gently returning that right foot back down onto your mat and allowing your knees now to fall to the right, maintaining that figure four shape. Shoulders stay anchored square towards the sky. And again, you may want to just have a hand on your thigh to invite that leg to stay open so it doesn't start to collapse in. So we're keeping the entirety of your left sole on the floor. So we're not rolling to the inside or outside of that foot. It's staying square. And even though we don't have any weight on it at the moment, all three points of contact on your feet are in contact with the floor. So we've got your big toe metatarsal, your baby toe metatarsal, and your heel. And then again, Notice how the side might feel different from the other side. This stretch sensation might be similar to 
to what you experienced in banana pose when we started our practice. So just take note of that for yourself and continue to breathe. We'll take another minute here. Perhaps slightly engaging the core to just lift your legs back up to center. And we'll go ahead and let the legs extend out. Maybe let them flop in and out just for a moment. We're coming into now one of my all time favorite yoga poses. This is supported fish. So you're gonna have to set up your blocks. The first one will go right in between your shoulder blades. So it'll be long ways at the top of your mat. And the second block will support your head. So that will go perpendicular in the opposite direction. And then once you've got your blocks, you can go ahead and lower yourself down onto those blocks. And of course you might need to readjust so they're hitting the right points. And you can take this spinal stretch with your legs straight out as I am right now or if you'd like to progress and get into the hips a little bit more, you're gonna bring the soles of your feet together, coming to a butterfly shape. So this is a variation of our supported fish here. And again, take a moment to really get settled so that we don't need to fidget in our posture. And once you've found that sweet spot, just breathing into it. We're gonna take a full two minutes here. Let your knees continue to fall towards the floor, giving into gravity. Your body will melt over those blocks. Your shoulder blades will melt closer to the floor. If your legs were bent in this butterfly shape, you could go ahead and straighten them out underneath you. 
And then you'll want to walk your elbows in, placing weight into those elbows to lift, tuck your chin, and lift yourself up just enough to move those blocks out of the way. And we're lowering down into Shavasana. And even though this is a short practice, it's still super important to maintain the Shavasana. We want to give our body time to integrate all of that length that we just introduced. And just like the rest of our poses, we'll only be here for about two minutes. But really use that time to scan through your body. Notice how just that short yin practice really changed how you feel. And we'll continue to breathe here. This is where I will leave you for today. Feel free to take a longer shavasana if you wish. And when you do come out of it, really take your time. No rush. Please like and subscribe before you go. And I will see you on the mat again very soon. Namaste.